Uh, we're very thankful today to have Matt Townsend here um, from Avaline Technologies, a machine metrics customer, and, and he's the OEE director there. Uh, Matt, thanks for being here. We're, we couldn't be any happier to have you. Well, thank you both for, for having me. I mean, you know, when you when you think of Amazon and you think of machine metrics, you know, those are um, heavy hitters in the uh, IoT um, arena. So, you know, just being being able to be a part of, of this is pretty neat. We're honored to have you, and thank you so much. Um, Matt, could you just, before we get, like, started on, would you tell us a little bit about Avaline, you know, set the stage here. For example, you know, tell us a little bit about the company and some of the challenges that you face today. Uh, Avaline is a medical device manufacturer. We primarily, uh, we have six different sites um, in the United States. Um, we have uh, facilities across the country, um, many of which are in Indiana. Um, but uh, you know, we've, we've uh, recently gone through some changes uh, for the better and um, wanted to, to get more into um, looking at, the, uh, at our machines and understanding what's, what's going on, on with them um, so that we can try to make better products for our customers um, and, and uh, really try to get a leg up. So. Yeah, and that, that kind of leads me to the objective, right? So, you know, you know, obviously you had a goal, right, when you're implementing, you know, new technology, machine metrics, for example. Could you tell us a little bit about what that, what that objective was? Uh, so our, our objective, um, I mean, we want to be the best that we can be, right? Um, nobody wants to put a, a junky part inside of their grandmother's hip or anything. Um, so what, what we want to do is we want to make the best parts that we can in the most efficient way possible. Um, and, you know, we uh, had some challenges uh, in, in doing this, but, um, you know, like our, our mission statement says on our company website is that we want to be a best in, in class medical uh, equipment provider. Excellent. And uh, obviously you, you insinuated there were some, you know, some challenges, right, that you were, you were trying to overcome when you started. Uh, you know, could you tell us about what some of those challenges were? Sure. Um, you know, uh, as you uh, alluded to earlier, um, there are a lot of challenges with, with uh, tracking OEE downtime. Um, and when we first started doing things but pen and paper um, was causing more problems than, than what it was solving. So um, we had uh, purchased machine metrics for a few machines. Um, and I mean, it, it took off like wildfire. Um, we uh, were able to then see a lot of the issues that were occurring on the shop floor that we didn't we didn't know. I mean, it could be um, the the performance of the machines. Different operators on different shifts were, um, you know, doing things uh, differently. Uh, so we needed to look at our standard operating procedures. Um, making sure that machines were scheduled correctly, um, you know, understanding where our, our bottlenecks were within our organization. Uh, those are the type of, of challenges that we were looking to, to, to solve. I really appreciate you rolling through those for us um, and my, my ineptitude of, of doing the slides properly, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, but, um, you know, regarding, you know, obviously you insinuated machine metrics in this case was, was a solution for you guys. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Obviously, you chose machine metrics for a reason, uh, and you can, you can. I'd love to learn a little bit more about that, but more so how you leveraged right data to drive solutions for some of these problems that you were experiencing. Right. So, um, you know, discovering bottlenecks um, is an interesting path to go down. If you think about it, I mean, a lot of people have read the book The Goal or seen the movie from the '80s or whatever. Um, and uh, bottlenecks can shift. And for us, you know, we've already, uh, we've always thought of one area being our bottleneck. Um, however, uh, it, we would always focus on improving that area. However, when you go backwards in, in the issues within our uh, organization, um, the, the lays that are feeding our grinders they weren't. They just weren't getting getting the the necessary product there. 
So our bottleneck had been shifted. So what we, what we did was we started looking at those lathes and saying, okay, we're using the machine metrics data. Um, we're, we're looking at it daily, um, having, having meetings over it, looking at, at what some of the issues are, having Kaizen events and saying, okay, operators, here's what, you, here's what we're seeing. Um, what's going on? If if you would have told me uh, that initially that that setups were six hours long and that's just the way that they were, and uh, I would have said, oh, okay, well, you know, that's that's a bummer. Um, but tools are scattered scattered all over the shop. Brought them over to the operators, put them on a board, and said, here you go. Here's everything that you need in order to do your job. We went from like six hours to an hour and a half. Uh, just I mean, flipping a switch, just looking at the data. So that way, then we were able to catch up with our orders uh, by making sure that that uh, our grinders were fed and that our bottleneck shifted back to where we where it should have been wow that's amazing uh you said from six hours to one and a half hours <laughs> that's quite a that's quite a transition um, yeah so <laughs> that was a that was a big deal for us you, you mentioned something uh about you know obviously the data led you to that discovery once you have that right you have that data how were you able to successfully implement, you know, a solution, right, on that shop floor that that actually helped to, you know, create that action, right? This is what everyone's looking for, right? You get the insight. How do you transition that to an action that really creates a um, process? Up? That's a good question. So, you know, looking at um, at the data is is just that. I mean, you can. It depends on what actions that you take off of what you see uh, that makes the difference. Um, and, and for us, it was, you, you know, we're going through all of our issues. We're saying, hey, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Going out there and then verifying that the data was correct, which it was. Um, and, and then trying to figure out, all right, so what does that mean? You know, what does that mean for us? What does that mean for our customers? What does that mean for uh, our operators? Um, and then holding those, uh, you know, Kaizen events where we sit down with the people that are actually doing the work and saying, okay, what is it that, that is going on and what can we do to help? Um, once they understood that it wasn't just Big Brother watching them, what they were doing or that we were trying to track them and that we wanted to help make their lives easier, I mean, it changed. It was a game changer for us. Wow. That's a... I'd like to think that for those of you, for those of you listening, right? Um, you know that that's incredible insight, and I think that you know, you know, in many cases, at least what we found is, you know, uh, you know, no matter how great the technology is, right, it, it tends to be, um, you know, a culture and how well it can be implemented, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I know that um, you know, you'd also told me a bit more about you know some of the processes, you know, within that bottleneck discovery. Obviously, you know, you discovered some other efficiency inefficiencies in the process. Um, would you mind diving, you know, any deeper into those and telling us a little bit more about, um, you know, what you found when you when you finally had the data? Sure. Um, you know, we, we also found out that that our training was lacking in a few areas. Um, when we would go back and do these kinds of events based off the data that we would receive, they stated that uh, we weren't doing a good job training. So um, we went back through and revamped our entire training program. Um, from soup to nuts and said, okay, what do you guys need in order to do your jobs? It's driven our, our uh, retention up uh, with employees, especially, um, you know, we're, we're, like I said, we're based in Indiana um, in the orthopedic capital of the world, which is Warsaw, mm -hmm. Indiana. And uh, um, I mean, you can't throw a stone without hitting an orthopedic company in this town. And they like to uh, uh, pilfer uh, employees um, as much as they can. So um, we've had um, several organizations come in and say, hey, you guys have a, have a world-class training program now. So um, we've been able to keep people and just based off of our training program and, you know, changing some of the things. Our operations manager has done a phenomenal job um, getting with the operators, finding out what they need. Um, and, you know, that, that was just another bottleneck in, in, our, in our process was training. Um, we, we've also worked through our production scheduling um, and, and solved that issue with this. Uh, part of the issue was that, that we weren't scheduling the operation leading up to our bottleneck correctly. So it was causing those machines to go dry. Um, and then also we, we found out that um, we just didn't have enough operators. 
um, to run our machines the way that we had hoped to run them. So, uh, and, and all these things were proven with the data. So we, it's not like we said that we wanted to hire a bunch of people. So we went out and did it. We had the data to back it up and say, okay, this is, this is a serious problem. We don't have enough people to do what we need to do. Yeah, that's, that's an insight that we see often with customers and, you know, again, uh, with a culture like yours, at least it's, um, you know, remarkable to see somebody actually able to take action on that and, you know, solve that, that bottleneck, which tends to be a bottleneck in many facilities that we, that we tend to, to, to visit and, and work with in. Um, you know, yep. so obviously, you know, we're talking about some of the, of the, you know, the machine metrics solutions, uh, you know, and how we were able to support some of these initiatives. Um, you know, some of the things I remember in some of our previous conversations, you know, we just, you know, when we were first talking about like when we got machine metrics installed, obviously you guys have a lot of equipment, you know, what was that mm -hmm. process? And could you walk us through kind of from problem identification to, you know, installation solution, kind of how that process worked for you guys? With installing machine metrics or with installing solutions to the problems that it was Yeah, yeah. machine metrics, I guess, to start, right? And then, um, you know, the okay. help implement it, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we continue to put machine metrics on any new machine that we bring in the building. And um, what we found is that, um, especially with newer newer equipment, um, hooking those directly up to our, our controllers uh, on, on the machine takes maybe a day. Um, and you're often off into the races. Um, getting um, the, the process that we go through, I mean, we, we just talk to our machine metrics rep and say, hey, we need to buy four new tablets and uh, licenses. And, it, you know, the next day, typically it's on a, it's on a truck from, you know, Massachusetts, Indiana. Um, and uh, um, we have, uh, like I said, four different machine shops uh that are that have it right now we're getting a fifth one here before too long i just saw the information come across for that so congratulations on another one um <laughs> so um but you know one day two of having machine metrics on um you're getting valuable data off of the machines um and and being able to start benchmarking um where you need to be um or where you want to be and that that's what we've done uh quickly is that um you know we we just added six new pieces of equipment uh, a couple months ago and um are already getting great data off those machines um which are telling us things that we didn't know previously so um but once we get the data set up a, Ka a kaizen event and uh sit down with the operators and understand a little bit more about what's going on but with some of the new features that machine metrics is coming out uh, with here the next month or so, um, you know, they, we can dive a little bit deeper from the tablets themselves. So that's pretty neat. Awesome. Yeah. We try to take feedback from our customers pretty seriously, especially guys when you have someone like Matt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, um, you guys have taken a lot of, a lot of suggestions from us. So that's, that's phenomenal. The, the fun of being uh, young and agile. <laughs> right. Um, uh, but also, you know, that kind of does speak to, frankly, um, working with AWS, right? We can focus on what we do best and we have that back end, that, that solidity, so we can really focus on that component for you guys. So mm -hmm. thanks, Tom. Thanks, AWS. Yeah. Um, let, let's talk about the results, right? So we were talking about some of the problems, how we implemented some of the solutions, and, you know, we started getting a little bit of that, you know, what did that quantify, right? To like, what do we qualitatively, like, quantitatively, like, what, what did we see, you know, as a company? What were the results? So our OEE, I mean, it, it increased probably 25-30% um, over the past year. Um, we're, we're able to more effectively utilize our, our workforce. We've increased capacity by, you know, uh, several million dollars without having to add additional equipment. Um, then we added additional equipment, um, but it helped to justify uh, our sales and, and try to increase that. Um, we've increased our throughput through our facility, especially through our um, bottlenecks because we're able to feed them and, and integrate with uh, several different ERP systems um, so that way we can effectively manage our, our product uh, going through the system. That's a really interesting one. Uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, when I hear the, the idea of integration, you know, that, that, that gets me excited, right? Because we're in some ways we're starting to look at the, the digital thread a little bit, right? And you know, we consider ourselves like the machine data component of that digital thread. You know, and, you know for you guys, mm -hmm. right, as an organization, you 
you know, where where does that machine data the data digital thread go, right? So you know, you know, I know we've talked about some other um, you know you know as you look into the future, right, of of leveraging data across organization, like where you know where how far does that go within Avaline? What other things are you looking to do? Uh, obviously, you're you're you know you're you're starting with the machines and operators, but what, you know what's next? Uh, we're looking at at being one Avaline, so you know bringing all of our five uh, different areas uh, together and 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 trying to work collectively so we can better support our customers. I mean that's that's the end goal is just being more collaborative. Yeah, and that's something that you know we definitely see in companies with you know five you know six facilities, right? Is how do you you know, create that you know that symbiotic nature between all of them. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that, that's very interesting within this industry, particularly. Matt, like, we're so thankful to have you here today um, telling the story. I think uh, I like to think of it as inspiring to any company, you know, who, you know, is looking to get started and, and, and not have to wait years, right, to leverage data across the organization. Um, so, you know, thanks for, for your willingness to share your story with us today. And, Absolutely. Uh, and congratulations. <laughs> uh, thanks for having me. Tom, you know, um, we're thankful for you guys hosting us. We're thankful for Matt for joining us. Um, you know, if you had any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I didn't put anyone's cell phones up there, but you have our email. So, you know, you can reach out to myself, Graham, Tom, or Matt with any questions. Um, and, you know, thanks for the time. Yeah. Thank, thank you both. Uh, great story. Great result. And, um, yeah. Thank you to the audience for um, being here, and please follow up with us. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone.